All right. Can y'all hear me? Oh, oh. Uh. Y'all hear me now? Okay, cool. So now that we got that working. Uh, so tonight I'm going to be talking about a little bit about transit cards and what I what I do. In, um, so, hey everyone, I'm Melody. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. Um, I love tacos, teas, unicorns, and of course, trolleys. Uh, and you can find me online at melody.dev or my Twitter handle at pixelyunicorn. So I'm from the beautiful uh, city of Philadelphia, and I just wanted to start off Anyone else here from Philly? Anyone come up from Philly just for this meetup? Just me? Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I love this place because, you know, it's literally across the street from the Bolt bus and the Megabus station. So uh, I can spend a day in New York without having to leave the neighborhood or even cross the street, which is awesome. Uh, so yeah, so I am part of the uh, SEPTA Youth Advisory Council. So for those of you not aware, SEPTA is the Transit Authority uh, in Philadelphia, and the Youth Advisory Council is um, an organization established by SEPTA to um, advocate for uh, transit access for youth between ages, I think, 16 to 22, I believe. But but yeah, so it's a little bit of what I do. So first of all, disclaimer, uh, this presentation is, you know, solely my content and doesn't express the views or opinions of, you know, SEPTA or anyone else I'll mention. Uh, so yeah, so so part of what I do in youth advocacy is uh, relate to the fellow kids. So I, I run the SEPTA Youth Advisory Council Twitter account. Uh, and this is a joke I recently tweeted where you want to visit Australia but can't afford the 1800 plane ticket. There's a station called Melbourne just for you. Uh, and as part of youth ad, uh, advocacy, I also, you know, go to outreach events uh, with SEPTA marketing to, um, you know, promote transit students to, you know, to freshmen or tr especially to like freshmen or people new to the area. Um, so these are like two outreach events I did past few years. Uh, and then I, I'm also, as part of YC, I also work on a, I believe, quarterly publication uh, on, you know, keep keep the public updated on what we're working on. So. Yeah, and then I also I also do a lot of design in my free time. So recently I uh, designed some. So th these are what subway cars look like in Philly. And I recently designed some pins uh, of the, sh the surprise Pikachu face. Uh, this is Pikachu after uh, after after Wendy's gives out free Frosties and people leave trash over the place. Uh, so yeah, if you're, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna making pins of these right now. So if you're interested, just follow me on Twitter, and I'll let you know when, you know, when they're out. So yeah, on top of that, I also occasionally design some maps. So here's like a suburban rail, uh, a fantasy suburban rail map that I recently designed. Uh, and obviously, another part of you know what I do uh, is you know, keep up with what's going on in Philadelphia. So recently, uh, there's, there's a movie called 21 Bridges that was filmed in Philadelphia, and they cast the Philadelphia subway as the seven train. Uh, so it was kind of amusing to see, you know, these uptown and queen signs in the middle of Philadelphia. Uh, like, that's one heck of an extension there. And uh, believe it or not, I made a map of it. So imagine the seven line, uh, you can just walk down the street, well, not even the street, you just walk down the block to the seven line, catch a train all the way down to Newark, or actually this fictional land called Central Jersey. Um, yeah, we extended it down to Northeast Quarter, uh, through Roosevelt Boulevard, down to Philadelphia's Broad Street Line, and you know all the way down to Philadelphia Airport. So imagine a one-seat ride from Newark Airport and Philly Airport. And you know, I don't know why I made this, but this is something <laughs> Yeah, this is something, uh, these are things I like to do in my free time. Um, so, yeah, totally. Um, so yeah, so that aside, uh, Philly Subway is also perfect for getting work done. So I would sometimes camp out, uh, I like to call it the operator ledge because you know there's a seat parallel, there's like a pri pri semi-private booth parallel to the operator ledge that are open on like most subway cars. So, you know, it's enough to fit a small laptop or in this case, you know, an iPad and get some work done. And that's what I do in my commute every morning. Uh, so imagine your if the subway was not crowded and you can actually get work done. Yeah, uh, that's my life. And that's how Philadelphia rolls. So, so youth advocacy side, I, I came here to talk about transit cards, not, uh, not everything that the SEPTA YAC does. So let's talk about transit cards. So, 
So let's see here. So Philadelphia has a transit card called the Septic Key, and it is right here. So, um, so basically, it was promised to Philadelphians as the future of fare payment. And um, basically, what it's replacing are these things called tokens. I don't know if you, uh, anyone here grew up with tokens in New York? Many of you? I wasn't old enough. I wasn't, I'm too young for that, unfortunately. Yeah, awesome. So uh, there's a mural that just popped up of like SEPTA, uh, no, sorry, a squirrel eating a SEPTA token just to immortalize the moment because they stopped selling tokens and I'm sad. Um, but yeah, so SEPTA key is like a Philly fair card system that was meant to replace tokens. Uh, but because, and this is what the SEPTA key looks like, but because I cannot use a SEPTA key, I haven't had, uh, haven't gotten clear to use a SEPTA key card uh, in my presentation, I drew an illustration with googly eyes and a beak called Robin. So say hi to Robin. Uh, <laughs> I stole this from like a British bank startup, so don't don't tell them that. Um, so yeah, so SEPTA, so basically, SEPTA key is like something that Philadelphians kind of kind of kind of grown to hate by now. Uh, this is a, basically a case study on what not to do when you roll out a transit card system. Uh, like they don't just hate it; uh, they hate 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 it. Um, and I'll explain why in a, in a few minutes, but. As always, you know, there's there's always light at the end of the tunnel, and things are getting better. Uh, so yeah, so let's go back to a time when things were simpler. Uh, the year was 20, 2011. Uh, Justin Bieber was a big thing back then. I actually went to a Justin Bieber concert, and I have, I have signed drumsticks from him, and I don't know if I should be ashamed or not. Uh, but that is something that people did. People apparently liked back in 2011. Uh, people also weren't into planking back then. I actually remember a friend ended up in a hospital for uh, trying to plank, plank on like a two inch, two inch like narrow crowbar or whatever, and it's like, oof. Uh, and also, more importantly, you have the Nian cat. Can anyone, can anyone hear this picture? At least kind of hear the picture in their head. Half of you, awesome. Uh, so yeah, 2011 is also when SEPTA signed a contract with ACS, which is the company in charge of implementing SEPTA Key. And basically, there's basically a news article from 2011 that highlights three of the main points of SEPTA key that, I'll, that I will work to debunk in this presentation. Uh, so first point is, if all, if, if all goes to plan, SEPTA, will be seeing, SEPTA writers will be seeing the new fair system replacing tokens by the end of 2013. Uh, about that, let's look at the timeline a bit. So this is the original timeline from the contract. Uh, so in 2011, the contract was awarded. 2013 was when, you know, like, Basically, city transit was supposed to get SEPTA key, and then 2014 is when like regional rail, or as or like you know what you the like, York equivalent of like NJ Transit and like Long Island Railroad and so forth is supposed to get SEPTA key. So obviously, you know, let's compress the timeline a bit and let's look at reality. Reality is that's not how that's not really how things worked worked out. So obviously, 2014 was the original completion date. That never happened. They just only started to install hardware in 2014. 2016 is when you know they started rolling out SEPTA key to like like a few thousand early adopters. I think 40,000 actually, not a few thousand. I don't know the number, but it's some small amount of people. Uh, you know, and then it wasn't until like the past few years, far after 2014, uh, when they started to roll it out. And they still haven't completed the rollout yet. So, so why is that the case? Well, this is partially not partially. This is part of the reason. Uh, basically, when SEPTA signed a contract with. Uh, but ACS, they were in the middle. Uh, they were being a middle of being acquired by Xerox, and uh, they basically, um, basically, a company, the organizational structure of the company in charge of delivering SEPTA key, like, you know, had a had like significantly changed sometime between, you know, they signed a contract and when they started implementing it. So they obviously slowed down time a lot and timeline a lot, and then Xerox decided to spin it off to another company called Conduent. So basically. Uh, <laughs> So basically, you're basically working with like a few different companies here that keeps, you know, changing its, I don't know. Like, we're not even sure if we're working with the same team from the time we signed the first, SEPTA originally signed the same, like the first contract in 2011. So who knows what's going on? Uh, but, you know, we have like three different companies, like this project stretched out for so long that we had three different companies. And also in 2018, Eagles won the Super Bowl. I don't know why it's important, but I just put it there. Uh, yes, go birds, no. Uh, and this project stretched out for so long that some set the key cards started to expire in July before they even finished rolling it out, uh, which is uh, yikes. 
So, so basically, it's not happening, but it obviously didn't happen by the end of 2013. Let's look at the second point. Uh, SEPTA aims to be first legacy transit system to establish a, you know, like a fare collection system that works seamlessly between fare road and other modes. Is it really seamless? Well, let's let's let, let's uh, let's find out. So this is the first iteration of the kiosk that rolled out, rolled out to the public. So the main problem with this kiosk is that if you had an existing key card, like what 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 like what what's the first thing you you think you do when you have an existing key card or like a card you want to reload? Anyone? Tap where? Okay, you're all smart. Okay, so the average person, their first instinct whenever they come up to a fair kiosk is tap the screen because that's how it works in literally any other city. Uh, and uh, you know, like people think the reader's on the screen and not this tiny black box in the corner, and that's fairly reasonable. So what ended up happening when the septic key first rolled out is that people accidentally get got like hundreds of people, at least like hundreds, yes, accidentally get multiple septic key cards. Because they didn't realize, they didn't make it clear that you know you were you were getting a new card instead of reloading it. So I fell for that mistake. Uh, I actually have 50 kept the key cards now, uh, not because of that mistake, but because I have them. Uh, but yeah, I, I initially fell for that same mistake too, and I ended up with five see, key cards within the first week, uh, which is annoying, but that's okay. Uh, so what they did was they basically, uh, you know, redesigned the user interface for the kiosk finally uh, to make it a little more clear and what to do, which is. You know, set the slogan used to be for getting there, and they're actually getting there, uh, which is awesome. Um, so obviously, there's some more like restrictions with you know key kiosks. For one, only American cards are set there for some reason, uh, so it doesn't really help people visiting from overseas. Uh, there is no way to get accept the key card from the airport. You have to pay like a full fare, like a full you know like a full like rail fare to get to Center City, and then you can get a key card, uh, which you know. Isn't really helpful for visitors, and then we also SEPTA also still retain um, like this paper tickets, uh, and the, uh, we, uh, SEPTA calls them like quick trips, like single use passes. Uh, but the problem with quick trips is that um, like these single use passes can't be used on buses. Um, no one knows why, but and no one makes it clear, and, and like the machines do not make it clear that you cannot use it on buses. So uh, yeah. Um, so another another main sticking point with the SEPTA key system is you know the website, uh, and this is a very con a, you know this is a website that launched in 2016 or 2017, and you know it had a lot of complaints because it was slow, it was clunky, and it was terrible to use. Uh, like this doesn't look like a website from 2016. It looks like a website from 2011. Uh, like like if you lost your SEPTA key card, you know, like how would you you know how how would I you know do it? And apparently. There's this hot list button that you know people don't even know what like half of these words don't even make sense and you know no one no one got the hang of it. And the worst part was that the website was obviously wasn't mobile friendly. Um, so, uh, so yeah, people didn't like the sub key website, and they uh, they redesigned it to make it look a little prettier. And believe it or not, this is the exact same contractor. The exact same contractor did the old website and the new website. Like I don't understand why they got it. Right, they didn't get it right the first time, but I'm glad they got it right eventually. So, so yeah, this is what the SEPTA key website looks like now. Uh, SEPTA recently, uh, you know, integrated key cards to the app, so you can actually, so you can like reload your card from like the, your phone, but you can't actually tap your phone to pay. And I'll go on to more details why later. Um, so yeah, so SEPTA slogan used to be "We're getting there," and they're actually getting there on making it slightly more seamless to use. So the third point I wanted to talk about with SEPTA key is being able to pay with a contactless credit card, wireless device like a key cob or key fob or cell phone, or pay a small fee to use a SEPTA branded card. Well, the, the reality of this is the only option you have for SEPTA key is to pay a small fee to use a SEPTA branded card. And this is this is like actual, this is an actual restriction to the system that's kind of, you know, that's probably the hardest to overcome. And here's why. So let's go back to so this is obviously you know what the kiosk looks like. Uh, the logos on the bottom are a complete lie. You can't really tap your Visa or Discover card or whatever uh, to pay for a SEPTA key. You can only tap a SEPTA key card. You can't even tap any MasterCard. You can only tap the SEPTA key card, which is you know 
which so yeah, these logos on the bottom are at these logos are at the bottom of every single kiosk, and they're a total lie. I don't know why they haven't removed them yet, but who knows? So here's the original timeline. Well, okay, so let's revisit the original timeline again. So you know, 2011 when the, when the contract was awarded, 2014 was the rollout. Uh, let's look at American payment technologies in the meantime. So by the time the key was supposed to roll out, uh, you know, like Android Pay, uh, which used to be, you know, which is currently currently Google Pay, just launched. It wasn't until another year later when Apple Pay launched. Uh, people didn't even get chips on their cards until like 2016 and 2017, like after the liability shift happened. And only in, raise your hand if you have a contactless debit or credit card in your pocket right now. So only now are we starting to roll out contactless, uh, you know, like payment cards. So basically, um, what that means is, so what that means is that, you know, SEPTA key, basically, um, because, you know, you're, this was supposed to be done by 2014, it obviously uses technology from like, let's say 20, like 2011 or 2012. And that predates all these mobile payment systems. So, um, so it, I, I, it, it really pains me to say this, but, they're gonna have to physically replace all the hardware required to set mobile payments um, because you know it implements like an e implements like a specification of like contactless payments that predates mobile wallets um, that predates you know like modern day contactless cards. So that's why you can't really tap anything other than a SEPTA key on a SEPTA key reader. It's because you know the technology is just. I mean, I don't want to say old, but I mean it's it's you know it's old. Um, so, so yeah, that's I have for septic. That's the state of septic key right now. It's still rolling on regional rail. I'm just, you know, I'm I'm kind of excited for like septa to finally, you know, fix m many of the common gripes with septic key eventually. Um, and yeah, so that's the quick story of septic key for you. Next thing I want to talk about is how everything is a transit card. So, did you know that? Basically, I saw this tweet on Twitter the other day, but you know, like the same, the same uh, liquid that you, acetone, the same liquid you use to dissolve nail polish, also dissolve plastic cards, but you know, leaves the RF, like leaves you know the antennas intact. So I stumbled upon this tweet on Twitter a while ago, and um, you know, uh, of someone like actually like taking apart their uh, clipper card with acetone and turning it into jewelry, and I thought, hmm, maybe I can do that. So. I have a plush Orca at home. I took it apart. I took my or so Orca card is like the Seattle Transit card. So I took my or uh, Orca uh, or Orca card apart. Uh, you know, cut the lip lip open and uh, sew sewed in a uh, Orca card. And oh, I forgot to put a video. Okay, I forgot to embed the video for some reason. Uh, oh well. But yeah, so imagine that you can just tap in and out of Seattle Transit with this Orca card. That is awesome. Uh, yes. Okay, go to bed now. Okay, cool. So, so yeah. So another cool thing you can do with, and I, I forgot to take pictures of the process. I didn't have time between the, you know, between when I started working on the presentation and now show you the process. But it's basically a little gruesome. You just, you know, you take the thing apart and you put it back together, and it just, it's a transit card now. Uh, cool. So another thing you can do, obviously, is make a, uh, I think call this a key card sandwich. So hoagies, Wawa, ho Wawa, Wawa hoagies are a big thing in Philadelphia. And it turns out if you put your key card inside your sandwich, uh, you can still, you know, you, you can use, you can technically tap in to set the key, set the with a sandwich. Not that you should, but cool. And then another cool thing that uh, I've recently seen is like wearables. So, um, you know, Boston, you may have heard of this, but uh, MBTA actually has like, um, like, not they 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 support they like I don't want I don't know how to put this but they like officially like support not a support but like they 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 sort of endorse this third party company you know like you know like acetone melting to Charlie cards and putting it, putting them into rings and you can actually pick up like a ring card too if you wanted and then something else I'm wearing on my wrist is like uh, Vancouver has this. Uh, Compass wristband, so you can actually wear a wristband to tap in and out of transit, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, and then another thing I'm really looking forward to is uh, idea open payments. So 
you may have heard this already because you're all transit nerds, but Japan has a Suica card. You can use it for like literally anything, not just transit. Uh, so you can tap, use, tap the subway, buy stuff at 7-Eleven and so forth. And you know, closest thing that we can get to that, at least in the States, is, uh, is like contactless you know, debit cards. So I'm really excited to, for contactless debit cards because you know, I mean, it will make like my transit card collection kind of redundant. But then that also means I can carry just one card around and you know tap into transit like a normal person would in any other country. Uh, so yeah, so, and I'll also make um, these. So so I recently searched Google for like tap tap your card, and there are just people searching Google on like how to like reload your card or something like that. And you know it will make like confusion around tapping your card uh, a lot more redundant. So yeah. So beauty with open payments, tap the key, happens to be a MasterCard. If you activate the MasterCard, you can use it to tap into New York subway. Uh, you can use it to tap into the CTA in Chicago. Bam, OK. And the cashier booth made me do it again, because they thought I was a witch. And uh, yeah, people think I'm a witch whenever I tap, uh, tap my transit, like that debit card, or like, you know, like a contactless card until like, you know, because it's not really widespread in America, especially not in Philadelphia, so yeah. Uh, I long for a day where people don't assume I'm a witch for tapping my card. Uh, so last but not least, uh, obviously you may have heard of this, but uh, future is cardless. You know, Apple Pay, Google Pay, mobile wallets is where it's at. Uh, so yeah, thanks. Thank you so much. This is where you can find me online. <laughs>